<clears throat> Hello, you caught me doing some preparation for today's episode. We're talking about something that many of you have been asking about, chicken diseases, how to identify them, what causes them, and how to prevent them. There are some basic guidelines that everyone should take to protect their coop community. Make sure you have fresh, clean water and nutritious food. And there are also many supplements and resources to ensure a healthy diet while avoiding any molded feed or fungal infections. But what about diseases like cocidosis, avian influenzas, Merrick's disease, salmonella, and virulent Newcastle disease? They can be difficult to identify or even pronounce if you're not a vet. Luckily for us, our good friend, veterinarian, and bird expert, Dr. Maurice Pateski from University of California, Davis, is here to explain the causes, symptoms, and prevention for these conditions. So let's get right to it. Welcome, Dr. Pateski. Thanks, Sheldon. My name's Dr. Maurice Pateski. I'm from the UC Davis School of Veterinary Medicine. And today we're gonna talk about some of the common diseases that might affect your backyard poultry. We're also gonna talk about some of the more severe diseases that can cause a lot of death in your backyard flocks. So one of the more common diseases that backyard poultry owners deal with is a disease called coccidiosis. And coccidiosis causes severe diarrhea and even death in very young birds from about three weeks to about 18 weeks of age. There's two ways you can prevent it. The first way is you can use a medication um, that's inside the poultry feed that's called a medicated feed or a coccidia stat. And this is not an antibiotic, this is just a medication that reduces the number of these protozoal parasites that are in your, your chicken's gut and makes them feel better. The other option, and you should do this regardless, is just having good husbandry and good biosecurity. So making sure your birds are raised in a clean environment, that's key. As far as treatments, if your birds do get a outbreak of diarrhea when they're young and a veterinarian diagnoses it as um, coccidiosis, in that situation, you, you can go to your feed store and get a uh, coccidia stat called amprolium, and you can add that to your chicken feed. Next, we're gonna talk about avian influenza or avian flu. And this is becoming a more common problem, so it's really important that we do our best to prevent this virus from spreading to other flocks. There is no treatment for it. One of the more common symptoms, unfortunately, is just death. So what we need to do is to make sure that the virus doesn't spread into our flocks. And if it does spread into our flocks, that we tell the proper people, we, we reach out to our veterinarians. The best way we can prevent the virus from getting into our flocks is making sure we have good biosecurity, and especially with respect to things like ducks and geese, because those waterfowl are the primary reservoir of the virus. The next disease I wanna talk about is a disease called Merrick's disease, and it's caused by a virus, and that virus is ubiquitous, it's common. Wherever you have chickens, you're gonna have Merrick's disease virus. There is absolutely no treatment for it, but the best thing you can do as a backyard owner is to make sure that the chicks that you're purchasing are vaccinated against Merrick's disease. The vaccine has to be done at day one of age though. If it's done after that, because the virus is so common in the environment, they've already been exposed to it and they might show clinical signs um, that are typically associated with Merrick's disease, the most common being paralysis. Basically, they can't move at all. There is no treatment at all for Merrick's disease. So it's really, really important that you get vaccinated and that you remove as much of the virus from the environment as possible. And that means removing as much feather dander as possible in order to reduce the amount of virus in the environment. So salmonella is a relatively common bacterial disease that humans get and chickens get, among other species of animals. And it's really important to realize that the salmonella that makes you and I sick, that chickens can carry, unfortunately doesn't make the chicken sick. And vice versa, the salmonella that makes the chicken sick typically doesn't make us humans sick. So it's really important to realize that just because your chickens appear healthy doesn't mean they're not carriers of the salmonella that make you and I sick. And that's why it's really, really important for us to wash our hands and to make sure that we're cooking our eggs properly so we don't accidentally get our loved ones and ourselves sick at all. There are no treatments for salmonella. The most important thing to recognize is that salmonella gets into our flocks usually from things like rodents, so mice and rats. So that's why it's really important to have good biosecurity to make sure we have good fencing 
and to make sure we don't leave feed out because if we leave feed out that's when our rodents get into uh, our chickens feed and that's when they'll poop and that's when our chickens will be infected with a salmonella that might make you and I sick. Virulent Newcastle disease is a virus that causes among other things death. So unfortunately, there's no treatment for it. It can cause uh, neurologic syndromes with twisted necks and things like that. Um, it can make our birds have GI issues like diarrhea. There is no treatment for it, and it's highly infectious and causes a lot of disease. You want to get what's called the Lasota or the B1 vaccine. You can usually get these at your feed stores. You need to make sure that you give the vaccine every six months if you are going to vaccinate. And just be aware that the vaccine can cause some very mild clinical signs. It's really important that we prevent the disease from getting into our flocks in the first place. And in that scenario, we just really want to focus on making sure we have excellent biosecurity, preventing our birds from interacting with our neighbor's birds, because we don't know what diseases they might be carrying, especially if they're carriers of a disease like virulent Newcastle disease. So I hope this discussion was really educational for all of you. And with that, I'd like to turn things back over to Sheldon. Well, I can't thank you enough, Dr. Pateski, for joining us at Coop Corner today. I think we could fill up this entire backyard with all the knowledge you've provided. And with that in mind, everyone should go subscribe to the UC Davis School of Veterinary Medicine YouTube channel for more from Dr. Pateski and many others. Check out the description in this video for a link. Thanks for having me. And if you do notice something that's wrong with your chickens, don't ignore it. It's better to deal with small problems before they become big problems. We hope this helped answer many of the questions you had about the health of your flock. If you haven't already, make sure to find a well-regarded vet you can trust in case your birds seem a little under the weather. And make sure you share this video with anyone you know who has their own backyard chicken community so they can keep them healthy as well. Also, if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel so you can see what we have in store for the future. Our channel has a lot of talking about our friends who love squawking, so you can get caught up on all our videos to fill the time until we come back for a next season here at Coop Corner at Manapro Yoke Tube. It's been great seeing you again. Thanks for stopping by.